Hello and person, this is Anton, and well, it's time we've talked about 3i Atlas once again. We do have some updates and some new discoveries. And in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's of course this. The third ever interstellar object, or interstellar comet, discovered back in July of 2025, that scientists have been rushing to study for the past few months. And well, right now the comet has just completed the most intense part of the journey. It passed through its perihelion, or the closest point to the Sun. But unfortunately for us, for this crucial period, it was entirely hidden by the Sun and was only visible from planets like Mars. We actually discussed the observations from Mars in one of the previous videos in the description. But I mean, just in case you're curious, there was not much to see. But despite of this, a lot of space-based instruments kept their eyes completely locked on this comet just because this is such a rare event. But now that it's re-emerging from behind the Sun, Researchers have a new chance to observe it once again, and we do have some of the first discoveries already. But today we're not really rehashing some of the older facts, that as always you can check out in some of the previous videos in the description, and we're not discussing any basic facts. So for example, speed, size, age and so on, all of this was mentioned before. Instead, we're just focusing on some of the most recent updates. And specifically updates that might be a little bit unexpected, and updates that reveal the true nature of this object. But a lot of these discoveries are obviously super exciting just because of how old this comet is believed to be. At 7 billion years old, or possibly even older than that, this is literally a time capsule. It's now releasing material that's billions of years old, giving us unprecedented insight into the ancient history of the galaxy. But what exactly happened during the perihelion or the closest approach to the Sun? Well, this officially happened on October 29th, or basically just a few days back. And at this point it was about 130 miles or 220 million kilometers away from the Sun. So actually just a little bit farther than planet Earth. And since the comet was hidden from Earth, researchers had to use space observatories such as SOHO and GOES-19. These observatories were perfect because they generally are designed to block the sunlight because their main mission is to study the solar atmosphere. And so they were able to observe this particular comet and did discover some intriguing facts. And the first discovery here was right before the perihelion. This was like October 20th to 25th. During this time, 3 Atlas underwent a rapid and dramatic brightening. It basically became brighter than ever before, and I think from Mars it would have been absolutely spectacular to see. But this surge in brightness was much steeper than usually seen in most comets, which normally brighten much slower as their eyes turns to gas. With one analysis calculating that the brightness increase was so dramatic that here the proportionality was inverse to the distance with a power of 7.5. Or just to rephrase this, something really bizarre was happening on the surface. This was officially reported in this study you can find any description. But because this is a completely new discovery, nobody has any idea why this happened. We just know that it seems to have dramatically increased its gas emissions as soon as it got closer to the sun. But on top of this, observations have also revealed that the comet seems to be much bluer than the sun itself. And this is quite a significant discovery because there is a dramatic color shift from what it was like before. Here it essentially indicates that a lot of volatile molecules such as cyanogen and possibly ammonia were now contributing substantially to the visible light. And so here the strong glow from all of these gases was enough to overpower the typically reddish light that's reflected by the dust. And moreover, this is of course the third color change, because before that the comet was also green for at least a few weeks. The video in the description discusses this a little bit more. And by the way, why it was green is still not entirely certain. And so here the observations once again confirm that this comet was intensely active during the flyby, shedding the material way more than a typical comet in the solar system. And this potentially confirms that this is indeed an ancient object that's never actually seen any star before. It was very likely formed on the outskirts of an ancient star system and spent billions of years in complete darkness. Which is once again why this comet is so exciting. Here's another really exciting image from the Very Large Telescope showing us how the coma changed over time and how it even produced an unusual bloom facing the sun. But we also have some additional observations and some additional discoveries coming from the observations by the James Webb. Here by seeing this comet in the infrared, it was once again confirmed that this comet has been extremely irradiated or essentially during its lonely journey for billions of years, it was constantly bombarded by galactic cosmic rays, with this extremely long exposure fundamentally changing the materials on its surface through an extremely slow chemical process that took billions of years, which resulted in the development of a very thick and difficult to penetrate crust that was estimated to be anywhere from 50 to 65 feet or 15 to 20 meters deep. 
And so had we actually landed on this comet when it was still far away from the sun, we would have actually found ourselves on a very bizarre object. Object containing super ancient crust produced by the interaction with the cosmic rays. And this irradiation process explains one of the comet's earliest unusual chemical detections, which you can also see in this graph. The extreme levels of carbon dioxide enrichment that was actually kind of difficult to explain at first. And so here billions of years of interactions of carbon monoxide with the cosmic ray radiation as the comet traveled across the galaxy resulted in all of this carbon monoxide turning into carbon dioxide. Which is why it was observed in such huge amounts. And for astronomers this is actually a bit of a paradigm shift. It just taught us something new. It means that the gas and ice we see venting from comets, in most cases, seems to be processed material, usually a product of extremely long journeys, with the surface interacting with the cosmic rays for a very long time. And so it's not actually pristine material after all, and very likely different from the material that produced the original star system. So here we're talking about something that has been chemically modified for a very long time. And in this case, if scientists want to find clues about its birthplace, here we would have to hope that some of this intense solar heating due during the perihelion was strong enough to potentially erode some of this external crust and expose some of the untouched ice or primordial ice underneath. So right now we don't really know exactly what we're going to see. Nevertheless, 3i Atlas still offers us unique information, including, as I mentioned previously in one of the videos in the description, slightly higher levels of nickel compared to the comets in the solar system. And so here we have at least some hints on what some other star systems might be made out of. But obviously nothing concrete yet. But then there was another study that proposed something really intriguing in regards to these comets. So basically here the question is, why is studying these interstellar comets even important? Well, here it might challenge our understanding of how planets may form. And that's because in the standard model of planet formation, usually dust and small particles stick together to eventually form planetary bodies. But here in this proposition there's this one small problem. It's referred to as the one meter barrier. Once objects reach about one meter in size, they tend to bounce off and shatter upon collision instead of sticking together. Which of course raises a question. How do planets form then? And some of the recent models suggest that a lot of interstellar objects, due to their omnipresence in space, could potentially be gravitationally captured by some of these dusty disks around young stars and then potentially act as a kind of a foundation for a new planet. Or basically act as a kind of a seed onto which other material can then suddenly start building up. And this is actually crucial because in this case it dramatically speeds up planetary formation process, with this particular bizarre capture mechanism potentially explaining why some of the larger planets like Jupiter seem to be found more commonly around stars much more massive than the Sun. In this case the higher mass star is simply more efficient at capturing these interstellar objects and thus is better at forming large planets. But for now this is a hypothesis, even though it does explain one major problem with planetary formation models. Without actual simulations and without observations from somewhere else, it will be difficult to prove this. Nevertheless, if this is correct, it means that even planets like Earth potentially formed when four and a half billion years ago some kind of an interstellar comet approached the Sun a little bit too close and essentially served as a seed for the formation of our own planet. But when it comes to additional observations, well, technically they're all going to start now. Now that the comet emerged from behind the Sun, the second phase of observations is going to begin. And the first post-perihelion viewing was right here. This is during Halloween, captured by the LAL Observatory's Discovery Telescope. Now it still looks like comet and obviously not some kind of an alien spacecraft, so that's the good news. But the much better news is that it should now be also visible to even amateur telescopes in most of the locations in the Northern Hemisphere. And though it's still going to be kind of difficult to see, appearing as a kind of a visible smudge, usually in the morning twilight, as the comet moves northwards, it will actually become slightly easier to see, which means that we're going to get more and more images in the next few weeks. And so right now a lot of different space telescopes and ground telescopes are trying to conduct as many observations as possible. So here we're talking about both the Hubble and the James Webb, solar observatories like SOHO and PUNCH, and even interplanetary missions like Lucy and Psyche. These missions are going to be passing through the cometary tail, and so they're going to be providing some of the chemical data in the next few months. But some of the most exciting opportunities are going to be in approximately one month from when I'm making this video. That's because 3i Atlas is going to make its closest approach to our planet on December 19th. And so during this time we're probably going to get a lot of different pictures and a lot of additional footage. 
and hopefully around the same time, we'll also get some data from the Clipper mission that's going to fly through and hopefully collect some of the samples from the cometary plasma tail and return the data for scientists to analyze. And well then, by March 2026, it's going to be already near Jupiter. At this point, it's going to be practically impossible to see, and because it's moving so fast, it's never going to return. And so right now, we only have like a couple of months to collect as much data as possible, because as soon as it's far enough, it's no longer going to be visible. But based on all of these observations, it once again confirms that this is a really bizarre and very unexpected comet. For example, just the fact that it changes colors three times and dramatically brightened near the sun is already kind of difficult to explain and will require additional studies and additional data that we just don't have right now. On top of this, the discovery of the irradiated crust that's at least several meters deep fundamentally shifts how we should be analyzing these objects because it's not really primordial crust and has been formed by billions of years of exposure. And so this comet is not just an amazing sight, this is one of the most exciting objects to visit the solar system in the last decade. But here we do have to get comfortable with the idea known as negative capability. Basically being comfortable with uncertainties, mysteries, and possibly never actually having all of the answers. Since we only have a couple of months left to study this, there's a chance that some of these questions will never be answered at all. Nevertheless, we'll definitely come back and discuss this comet a few more times, just because this is super exciting for astronomy, and there are just so many things that scientists are hoping to see in the next few weeks. Until then, thank you for watching, check out previous videos in the description, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.